Welcome back to the 61st part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one, I'm going to carry on with what I was talking about in the last video, which is the settings structure that we've just implemented. And as you can see here, in if I go into my editor, you see in the settings folder we now have multiple different settings files that we use based on whichever environment that we're uh, running, the, running the Django project within. So at the moment, this is this is good, but what I want to do is improve this settings uh, slightly so that well, firstly, I want to use the old database, which still has uh, the data in it, because at the moment it's created a new a new database. As you saw at the end of the last video, I ran the migrations, which meant that I just created a new database and uh, made sure that the structure of that database was right. But uh, that does mean I have two databases now, and I only want to refer to the original one and not the new one. So that's the first change I want to make. And I also want to talk maybe a little bit about how you can optimize your Django project for uh, running in production. Now, I'm not going to talk about uh, the actual process of deploying a Django application because that's probably a whole other series in itself. I am going to just point out a few things that you can do uh, maybe to prepare your code uh, for that production environment so that you're making sure that you're taking all the uh, security precautions and uh, just various things that you may want to bear in mind during the deploy. Let's go ahead firstly and change the database. So if we go back over to the terminal here, I'm going to see at the moment in this folder I have uh, a db.sqlite3 file and this was created uh, when we ran that migration uh, in the last video to do the to create a new database. We just created a new database uh, which is stored in that file there. Now that database doesn't have any data in it so I want to use the one which is in the parent directory so ls uh, the directory above and you can see I've got this one which is the one that I was creating originally. Now the way that the database settings works at the moment is that it's going to join the base directory with db.sqlite3 if you're not familiar with os.path.join, it just takes two paths, so base and db.sqlite3, and then it makes sure that there is exactly one slash between them. So it's a really good way of joining two paths together. So that's all that does. But the the issue here is coming from base which is currently not correct, because it was thinking it was in uh, the, the main tutorial folder here, but since we put it in the settings folder as well, it's actually gone down another directory. So to sort of bring it up uh, and refer to the base to as being the same directory which it was last time, I'm actually going to wrap it in another os.path.dir name which is just going to refer it to its parent directory. So take the path and uh, lose the last folder on the end of that path if you like. So os.path.dir name and I'll put the bracket on the end there to close that off. And then I'm going to try to uh, run my Django project, so Django admin run server. And that should give us access now to the old database which is in that parent directory. So if I try to log in here, you can see we now have all the data again. So the problem there was if we were to print the base directory, so I could do that by doing Django admin shell, and then I'm going to import Django settings, so from django.conf, stands for configuration, import settings, uh, settings.baster. Uh, you don't have to do this, of course, it's just optional, but I'm showing you that the base directory is now Django tutorial. That is the main project folder, as it should be. But before, because we moved the settings uh, into another subdirectory, it would have been uh, Django tutorial, tutorial again on the end of that. So by wrapping it in another os.path.dir name, it's just removed that last uh, folder which shouldn't have been on the end there. But it happened because it was a result of us moving our settings into that new structure. Now, I can quit out of that, and what I want to do now, since we've already got all our data back, is I'm going to remove that database that we don't need anymore. So, print working directory shows me that I'm in the uh, I'm in the directory which had the old database, which is the empty database, sorry, the new database, which is the empty database. So the old one had all our data in it, which is the one that we're using now. So I want to remove uh, that file because we just, we don't, we don't really need it anymore. So that's gone. So rm, the name of the file, will remove the file. 
So now I'm going to talk about the uh, things you may want to bear in mind when you're trying to optimize your project uh, ready for going into production. So I'm not going to cover everything here because there's just a lot of things that you could do to a Django project to you know, improve security and improve the uh, way it runs in production and things like that. Uh, mostly probably to do with produ uh, production security uh, because that's the main thing that you're probably going to be a bit vulnerable at, uh, especially if you just take a uh, Django project straight from the start and then uh, try to deploy that um, but realistically for most projects that's not going to be too much of an issue so I, I tend not to worry about it or I, I say to most people don't worry about it too much uh, until you sort of got the hang of the rest of it so I am going to cover a couple of important points to note when you're just trying to find out how you're supposed to, to write and structure a Django project so let's go to uh, the Django docs so that's a really good source because it has what's called a deployment checklist and here is essentially a list of everything you need to do uh, to optimize your Django project for a deployment so we have the secret key which should not be stored in source control so if it was me deploying this application this secret key would not be stored uh, would not be the production secret key that I would be using it's fine to commit a secret key because you could just replace this with some other set of random characters and uh, that would be your production one which you wouldn't share as it says in the comment above um, so that's just one thing to, to bear in mind it's good to store that in an environment variable uh, I'm going to go through uh, so debug should not be enabled uh, there's just lots of things here that you can feel free to read but I am going to just point out a, a couple of them so if we wanted to set this as an environment variable what we would do is uh, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to say os.environ uh, and then I'm going to say secret key and now we don't have a secret key environment variable so we're going to need to set that so export uh, secret key so that's the name of the environment variable is equal to that thing that we just copied and I've just set that environment variable locally so if you do env and so env will give you a list of all the environment variables but I'm going to pipe that into grep so in my case because I'm on Mac it's going to be ggrep uh, and I'm going to say secret key so this is just filtering by uh, the environment variables that have secret key and now you can see that it does indeed give us the secret key there so we should be able to use that now so that should still run and be able to pick up a secret key if we do Django admin run server so you can see that still runs and I'll just double check if we go back to the website that this is all working fine so that's good and now I'm actually going to remove the database settings from uh, the base settings and I'm going to separate it out into production and development now the reason for this is you're very rarely going to have uh, database settings that are consistent between both of those environments so that is one reason for really needing to separate them so I'm going to cut this out of the base directory base settings file sorry and I'm going to paste it in dev and this is fine for dev so that's uh, that won't need changing because this is what we're using currently if you want to change the back end of course you can do that too and I'm going to put the same in production but this is where you would change it to your production database settings whether it be MySQL or Postgres or uh, maybe some other database backend um, hopefully the majority of you won't be using SQLite 3 in production because that's really probably not recommended but uh, the option is there so if you just wanted to store your data in a file maybe have a really small site for example maybe that would suit your use case but I am going to just get rid of some of these comments because we don't need them now I think this is pretty good but we still have debug equals true in our base settings and that still hasn't been overridden in our production settings as well so that's something that's also important to say uh, debug equals false and when you say debug equals false in your Django settings Django it won't actually work uh, at all so it'll just break so I'll demonstrate that by showing uh, if I say debug equals false in the development settings which is of course the settings that I'm set to in my Django settings module it says you must set settings that allowed hosts if debug equals false now this is sort of a security measure so that you don't just allow anyone to uh, have access directly to production server potentially without you being aware of that 
so I'm going to remove that from development, but in production, uh, what you would generally want to do is set allowed hosts, and that would be equal to uh, whatever you want, your production settings, uh, so generally in the form of an IP address. But just to get around that warning uh, straight away to get you up and running, you can say I'm just going to allow anything for now and then I'm going to come back to it. Uh, so later on you will want to change that because that would make it more secure. Uh, but for now that, that would get you up and running. You could potentially deploy your application and uh, Django wouldn't complain that you hadn't set the allowed hosts. But that is the quickest way of doing it. Uh, whether that's the best way or not, uh, I'd argue it's probably not, but that can always be something that you're going to change later on uh, when you sort of get more familiar with uh, how your deployments are going with Django. Now, one last thing I thought I'd point out was that if you do uh, a different management command, as you may have seen uh, earlier when I pointed at the docs, you can also do Django admin uh, check so check is the management command in Django, it's built in, just like start project and start app and all these other ones, uh, run server as well. Uh, you can do a flag called dash dash deploy. So this is going to check your entire Django project for mostly uh, security vulnerabilities or other things that you may just not have uh, remembered to do uh, before setting your production settings correctly. So if we hit enter, you can see all it does is gives, it gives us a list of warnings to say, okay, well, these are the certain things that you may want to consider when you're deploying a Django project. Now, if you're actually uh, deploying a serious Django project, I would recommend that you read every single one of these and take it into account when you're configuring your Django project. But as I presume you're sort of still a, mostly trying to introduce yourself to Django, uh, you're probably not going to need to worry about most of the more advanced security features. Just bear in mind that Django does have the potential to be a very, very secure uh, way of running your application. So it's a, it's a very robust framework and although it may not be extremely secure straight out of the box, although it is surprisingly secure just straight out of the box, uh, there are certain things that you can do to make it very, very secure, uh, just like as, as if it was any other framework for, for that matter. So with all that said, that hopefully wasn't too overwhelming because I know that's sort of a lot of settings and stuff to comprehend, which may not be the most interesting part of your Django project because you know you're probably more interested in writing the Python code like I am. But it is an important factor to bear in mind when you're writing your Django project that it needs to be secure if you're intending to deploy it into app, into production and it has to be it just has to have all the appropriate settings so that you can uh, run your site effectively and not have too many problems hopefully so with all that said in the next one i think i'm going to talk about uh, the requirements files and how you can keep a list of everything that your django project depends on to be able to run so that it's much easier to install that in the future